Mine was just dope.
Well, I'll start off by welcoming everybody to our Connected RV seminar. Looks like I know most of you, but for those who don't know me, I'm Chad. And uh, if you ever need me here at the dealership, I'm in the aquarium over there. And, uh, today we're going to talk about how to be connected while on the road and in your RV. And that's going to be TV, internet, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it simple. Uh, most of us as RVers want to hop in our camper and it works. We don't want to have complicated stuff to go through. So we're going to try to keep this as plug and play and easy as, as possible. Uh, if anybody wants more technical info, you can catch me afterwards, but we'll try to keep it simple and easy for everybody. So to start off with, just to kind of get a feel of where everybody's at with everything, how many people still have cable or satellite television at home? Okay, so still a fair number of people. I, I would assume that just about everybody has high-speed internet at home, right? Either cable or fiber, uh, LTE. And uh, how many people at home don't have cable or satellite and stream on their TV over the internet? I'm one of those people too. Okay. So we got a little bit of everything. That's good. And who has internet service in their camper already? Anybody? A few? Well, I know you do. <laughs> All right. Well, perfect. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is TV in your camper, TV on the road. And that's something that's changed a lot in the last decade or, or two with the move from analog TV to digital. And for those of us that have been camping for a long time and camped back in the days of analog television, you know, you remember cranking your antenna up on the roof and trying to get the signal <laughs> dialed in. Sometimes it was fuzzy, sometimes it was great, and it was it was always a, a crapshoot. You never knew what you were gonna get. Well, digital TV gave us the, I guess, the beauty of a perfect signal when it works, right? With, with digital, it's an all or nothing thing. You can have a weak signal, but as long as it's steady, you'll get a nice perfect picture. But if it's not working right, it's pixelated, you can't get anything. And I've noticed in our camper where I used to get, I don't know, eight or ten local stations, now I can maybe get two if I'm lucky. So for me personally, I had to find another, another solution for that. But for analog broadcast television, you really only have a couple of options. Um, Every camper nowadays has some type of an antenna on the roof, and most of them are omnidirectional now, which means it sits on top of the camper and there's nothing you have to do to it. There's no crank inside, you don't have to crank it up. There's nothing to rotate it, it's always there. And these are great for you know ease of use, but when you have an antenna that picks up 360 degrees all the time, you lose some what's called gain or directionality and strength in the signal. So you don't always get the best signal on those. Uh, they do have built-in amplifiers. You know, most of them will have a little switch next to your, your uh, where your cable comes into the television on the camper. Always make sure that's on, that helps to boost the signal. Uh, for anybody that still has the old bat wing style antenna that you have to crank up, uh, they do make uh, the new HD antennas like this one here that you can put on the roof of your camper you know, to uh, kind of replace the old technology. So that's kind of the, the basics of it. Now, the other option that you have some places is cable, right? And that, that's something that, unfortunately, around here, if you're a local camper, you really don't have access to in most campgrounds. Um, actually, locally, I can't think of anybody that has cable television. If I'm wrong, correct me. Uh, but cable is probably the easiest thing to get set up if you're in a campground. You carry a piece of coaxial cable with you, you plug it into the campsite, you plug it into the camper, and you're ready to go. But since that's something that we don't really see around here, most people that want off-the-air live television are looking at something like satellite TV. Uh, so with satellite TV, you have a few different options. Uh, one of the most popular ones that we're seeing nowadays, rather than uh, permanent roof-mounted antennas that are pretty complicated, are portable dishes, which is what this is here. This is a tailgater, and it's a, a, a totally portable dish that you sit outside the camper, and it's automatic. It finds the satellites and everything for you. Super simple. Um, and these are digital dishes. Uh, dish Network is probably the most popular choice for 
the tailgaters because they do offer a pay-as-you-go solution. You don't have to pay for it all year if you're not going to be watching satellite in your camper all year. Uh, but with these, these newer versions uh, have the capability for multiple television viewing. If you've been in, in the RV space for a while, the older dishes, when you plugged in your satellite dish to your camper, every television in the camper had to watch the exact same thing. You had one receiver and that was it. Or you just had TV in the living room and you had nothing in the bedroom. Well, the newer versions like this offer the capability of multiple televisions. So you could have a receiver in the bedroom and one in the living room. Watch two separate things on your TV. Uh, one of the nicer things about these is that they're a one wire hookup most, most of the time. This gets its power from the actual coax cable that plugs into it. So this plugs into the camper, the receiver plugs in inside, and it does its thing. Now there are a few uh, few styles of wiring in campers that don't allow that signal to pass through properly. You may have to put a pass through on, that's not a big deal. But they're a really simple way of, of getting satellite TV in your camper. Um, it, it can be a little bit cost prohibitive sometimes for, for folks if you don't want to spend 50 or $75 a month on TV. But if you already have satellite service at your home, a lot of times you can add another receiver to it for, for pretty cheap. I know back when we had Dish Network at home, uh, we were able to add our camera onto it for, I think it was like 10 bucks a month. So it doesn't have to be a really expensive thing uh, to add satellite TV. Uh, and you do get a lot of the functionality that you get at home. Uh, like for Dish, uh, they use the Wally receiver, which is the same thing that you would use at your house. So it's an HD receiver. Uh, you can upgrade these to have a DVR in them. So you can have a DVR in your camper just like you have at home. Uh, you can have a uh, Wi-Fi adapter for these to connect to the Wi-Fi in your camper that we'll talk about in a minute, uh, to have their on-demand stuff at your fingertips just like at home, or use the streaming services that are built in. I think they have Netflix built into a lot of these uh, Dish Network receivers. So with satellite, you know, it's more of the, more of the home experience for most people. Uh, with the with the dishes, it is important to make sure that you have a clear line of sight to the satellite. So if you camp somewhere with a lot of trees, that could be kind of challenging. <laughs> but uh, with the portable dishes, even if your roof of your camper is underneath the tree, you can take this and put it out in the grass somewhere and still be able to get a view of the satellites. Uh, they do make uh, tripods for these that you can set them on. Of course, you can get locks to to lock it down so nobody nobody walks off with it. They do make roof mounts. If you do want to mount your dish to your roof and not have to mess with setting it up every time, they do still make a roof mount solution for those who want just like the ultimate simplicity. Um, I've seen, uh, I think, ladder mounts for these too. But kind of an easy, an easy setup. I think it normally takes five or ten minutes for it to find the satellites, get set up, and then you're ready to watch TV, so not, not too complicated. Uh, let's see here. So we've got off-the-air TV, got cable TV, satellite. Uh, the thing that I think a lot of people are going to nowadays are streaming services. You know, everybody's got Netflix at home or Hulu, Amazon Prime. Take your pick. There, there are tons of them out there. And I think a lot of people are kind of gravitating towards that because you can watch what you want when you want to watch it. You know, if you want to go camping and binge watch an entire season of something over the weekend, you can do that. That's what we do. Uh, so that can be a little bit complicated in a camper because you have to have internet and it has to be good internet. So, uh, you know, with the streaming services, it doesn't cost you anything extra normally to be able to watch it in your camper just like you do at home. So. You know, it saves you a little bit of money that way too. And that's That was kind of what we did at home. We went to all streaming and then when we go on our camper, nothing changes. So with streaming, that brings you to internet. So with internet service on the road, there are a lot of different options. Some of them are pretty complicated and some of them don't really work really well. Uh, 
one of the reasons why I'm doing this seminar is because I've tried a lot of them because I'm, I'm probably not your normal camper. I don't go camping and spend most of my time outside. I go to kind of hide and get away. So I'm in my camper a lot <laughs> and much to my, my wife's chagrin, sometimes I'm working a little bit while we're camping too. So I need a good internet to be able to hook the laptop to and all that. So, you know, the, the first option you have that, that probably doesn't require anything different than what you already own is using your cell phone as a hotspot. You, know, you can, most cell phone plans nowadays, if you have a smartphone, you have a hotspot option, you can turn that on, it creates a Wi-Fi network around your phone, and it uses your phone's data plan or hotspot plan that's built in to give you that Wi-Fi signal and internet while you're camping. And that was the first thing that I tried when, when we uh, started doing the streaming thing and working from the camper. And it can work pretty well, but you're generally limited on how much data you can use on your hotspot. Uh, with ours, I think it's I think it's 10 gigabytes. I haven't used it in a while. Which for you know working from your camper, some very very light streaming, you know checking emails that type of thing, you know that's probably plenty of plenty of data. But the problem you run into around here is signal quality for cell phones in campgrounds specifically Harmony State Park, that's the one that I always have trouble with. Your cell phone is typically, you know, sitting on a table in your camper, it's not very high up off the ground. There's all sorts of stuff in the way. If you're in a campground with no cell towers, it's hard for your cell phone to really find a signal a lot of times, so your internet speed can be pretty slow. Uh, the other problem with that is, if you are using it with a laptop or with smart TVs or streaming devices, when your hotspot's not on, those things don't have internet. And even if your hotspot's on and you decide you're gonna go take a, a walk or go sit under the awning or, or, or do whatever, you're taking your hotspot with you, the stuff in your camper's not working. So it's a good solution if you need internet sometimes in your camper. Uh, but you know, for me personally, you know, I thought you know, there kind of had to be a better way to do it. So the next thing that you could use would be campground Wi-Fi which again around here is something that you really don't see very often. Uh, I think the, uh, the KOA over in Grayville has Wi-Fi. But the thing that you run into with that is, am I close enough to their Wi-Fi system to be able to get a signal? Sometimes you're not. Number two, is that connection secure? Are people gonna see or be able to intercept what I'm doing on that connection? You know, and how fast is it? You know, even if they have a, a pretty, if you have a strong signal in the campground Wi-Fi that you can connect to, a lot of times they'll put a speed cap on it because they don't want 100 campers in the campground all streaming from Netflix at the same time. So they may limit your bandwidth or they may charge you or you may have to get on some type of portal and log into it like you do at a hotel. Um, so that's an option. Uh, another thing that you can do, uh, or another problem with campground Wi-Fi uh, a lot of times is, uh, well, it's, it's just not there. Uh, now you can use a repeater or an extender in your camper if you're, you know, on a fringe area of a Wi-Fi signal in a campground. And some campers have those, you may see them on the roof, have, you know, three or four big old long antennas sticking out of them, like a Wi-Fi Ranger, that kind of thing, Mike or made one. And those are okay but they only work if there's Wi-Fi in the campground. And then you have to get into the setup on that extender, tell it which Wi-Fi network to hook up to at the campground, make sure that you're logged into that, then it takes that signal, processes it, repeats it back out, or creates a new Wi-Fi network for you in your camper. So you're taking all of these hops through somebody else's Wi-Fi, which can slow it down. Uh, so it's, it's something that's, you know, I think at the beginning of, of uh, prepping campers for internet, it was something that we saw a lot of in, in RVs where companies putting some type of a, a Wi-Fi extender or Wi-Fi repeater on them because that was kind of, kind of the new technology of the day, but it still requires somebody else to create an internet signal for you to be able to use it. So most of the time around here, you may not be able to use it. Yes? Would they need a password though? Yes. 
Well, if, you're, if her question was, would you need the, the password for the Wi-Fi? And yes, but if you're camping somewhere, campground that has Wi-Fi. No, if you were using the extender and you're on a fridge and you were tapping into somebody else's Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you won't be able to tap into somebody else's Wi-Fi. You need a password, right? Right. Yeah, just be the campground's Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, don't tap into anybody else's Wi-Fi. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do that. I want to that <laughs> Okay, you better not be. No, 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 no. So if anybody knows Kelly's neighbors. Uh, <laughs> have them check to see if she's on their Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, the the repeaters can be a little bit tough to a little bit tough to set up. You also it's something you have to set up every single time you go camping. If you go camping somewhere else and they have Wi-Fi, you got to go in, change the settings on your repeater, connect to it, make sure it's working. So it can be a little bit finicky to work with. Uh, about the phone hotspot. So the other option is, and I've been down all of these things. I can't imagine how much money I've spent over the years trying to get the internet by camera. A portable hotspot. So you can uh, you can get a little device. Normally they're smaller than a cell phone that you sit on the table, and all it does is hook up to a cell service somewhere and give you a Wi-Fi signal called a, a hotspot. Um, you can get them from, you can go to Walmart and get a straight talk one for 50 bucks and they may charge you 50 or 60 bucks a month for the service, you know, an LTE type of a thing. Um, that gives you a dedicated device so you can leave it in your camper, you can walk away, your stuff still stays connected to it. The problem that I found with those is being such a small device, they tend to not get a very good signal either. Also, the plans are really limited. Yeah, like five to ten gigs. Yeah, you might have five to ten gigs of, I of got data. Two of them. That's what I use right now. Yeah, and you, you may go out for a weekend and stream a couple of movies on Netflix and be completely out of data. Uh, we had used one of those, and uh, yes. What if you have unlimited data on your cell service plan? Yeah. They don't do that on the little hotspots. Right. Unfortunately, they don't. They don't typically do that on the hotspots okay. um, because they know people would. And when you run over, they'll charge you like 70 bucks a gig oh, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I was on an AT&T plan one time that was it was $100 a month for like 15 gigs. And every time you went a gig over, they charged you. It was like $20 yeah. or something crazy. So, yeah, I dumped that one. But, uh, yeah, the portable hotspots, you know, it's kind of the next step up from using maybe your cell phone as a hotspot right. or trying to use the campground Wi-Fi. But I, I found that those are probably more designed for people who now think of the traveling salesman that goes from business to business with his laptop and needs internet service, but he's always kind of in the city, always close to a cell phone tower, and then they work really, really well. Um, I've used a couple over at uh, Miles Landing over off of Google New Harmony, pretty close to town. My cell phone gets a decent signal there, but the hotspots never really work real well. You know, I just think that how small those things are they don't have a great big antenna in them they just they don't seem to have the the, the reach of some other other devices uh, and then with that you do have the additional device you've got the cost of the plans which like he said can be really really pricey for what they are uh, and they have an internal battery you know that you got to make sure it's charged up you know or leave it plugged into a usb thing somewhere again it's something you always have to set up you're probably not going to leave it connected all the time uh, so it can, it can be a, a little bit, uh, you know, another thing that's a little bit finicky to work with. Uh, what I ended up going to myself uh, was a dedicated device for Wi-Fi, and it kind of combines all of those things into one. Um, I have to upgrade to this one now because it's the newest version. I have the version right before this from WineGuard. But most new campers nowadays are being prepped with this WineGuard Air 360 Plus antenna. Uh, just about everything that we have on the lot has it. And what this is, it's a combination antenna, so it's it's just like your off-the-air television antenna, so it takes care of that, so you have your off-the-air TV. But it's also prepped for 4G LTE uh, cell service for data. So uh, if you have one of these, inside your camper on the ceiling somewhere will be a little round plate 
that has like a Wi-Fi symbol on it. If your camper has that, then you're actually prepped. You've already got the antenna. You're prepped for their internet device. And what the gateway does, this is the part that you'd have to add on. Uh, it's a modem and a router for 4G LTE. So this thing will actually connect to the cell towers around you and then create your own Wi-Fi network that is always the same. It's always just like when you get home, if your Wi-Fi network's called my Wi-Fi one, two, three, same thing in your camera. It's always going to be the same network that you set up. Your stuff's always going to automatically connect to it. Uh, and there are plans for this from every, uh, every provider just about, we'll go through those in a minute, but this also works as a repeater. So if you are somewhere that has campground Wi-Fi and it's good and you want to use it, you can set that up as a repeater and use it that way. Use their internet instead of your data plan. Um, but it does, like I say, it does give you the option of having the LTE service where you have your own secure network that if you're working from your camper, that type of thing, nobody's going to be able to kind of watch what you're doing on it. Uh, these are a really easy install is basically two or three screws and a couple of plugs uh, and then you're ready to go. Uh, the service form can really vary. Um, I'm with AT&T on my cell phone, and they're actually one that I probably would not recommend for the data because they're kind of pricey. But uh, basically, uh, get your camper set up once you purchase the gateway, you have your monthly service, and most of them will do a pay-as-you-go kind of a thing so you don't have to pay for your data all year long like you do your cell phone. I believe yours does have the year 360 and will catch me afterwards or one of the service guys will double check and make sure okay. but it should have this so all you would need to buy is the gateway uh, as far as service plans go some of the uh, pay-as-you-go uh, plans for these uh, T-Mobile does a pretty decent pay-as-you-go uh, and it's these are all 4G LTE and one of the questions that I got before we started was uh, you know it's 4G LTE 5, 5G is out now you know would, wouldn't that be better and the answer for like at home or on your cell phone probably is yes um, we have uh, at home now I've actually switched to T-Mobile home internet it's 5G and it's about 300 megabits per, se per second speed which is which is decent um, it's better than anything we can get at our house. But for a camper, you know, 4G, I normally average on ours 25 to 50, maybe 100 megabits per second internet download speed, which for home isn't great, but in a camper, you're going to have maybe one, maybe two TVs streaming at once, but probably just one. You know, a couple of cell phones hooked to it, you know, maybe a streaming music device, something like that. So the speeds that you get on a camper unit are going to be less than you get at home, but you don't have 20 or 30 devices on it like you do at home either. So for, for, for our purposes, streaming TV all the time, working from the camper occasionally, uh, we've not had a problem with 4G yet on our camper. And it's a technology that will be supported for, gosh, you know, years from now still. But as far as the pay-as-you-go plans go, uh, T-Mobile does it. I mean, you can you can go anywhere from <laughs> about fifty-nine dollars a month up to one hundred and fifty, depending on how much data you need. But they T-Mobile starts off at uh, ten gigs of data for fifty-nine bucks uh, for thirty days, and it's a pay-as-you-go thing. So if you don't need it the next month, you don't pay for it. Um, and their their service tends to be pretty decent around here. Uh, AT&T for their 10 gig plan is, is exactly the same price. So if you're an AT&T customer, uh, you, know, you can have that on your plan and it's a pay as you go. Hey, Jeff, Does your TVs your camera smart TVs? Yes. Okay. If, if, or uh, if they're not smart TVs, you know, get a Roku stick or something to plug into the side of it. So same type of equipment that you would need at home. Um, if you don't have a smart TV in the camera, just you know, get a Roku stick or Apple TV, uh, Fire Stick, Amazon Fire Stick, that type of thing. 
Uh, but uh, if, if all you do is uh, want to keep your camper connected for basics, even with AT&T, you can get a gig of data for 20 bucks uh, by itself for 30 days. So not super expensive. Yes, sir. Did you want to add that uh, Air 360? Um, apparently I have the antenna. Mm -hmm. Just replace the antenna. Yep. The wiring all the... Yep. Yeah, you normally have uh, this to, re to replace it. Uh, this needs 12 volts up there, 12 volt power, but your uh, uh, that antenna should have 12 volts up there. If not, there's probably a lighting circuit or something close that can be tapped into. It doesn't draw much power. Uh, and the guys at the shop replace these quite often. A lot of people go to the Air 360 from the old Batwing or even a regular, you know, King antenna, that type of thing. So yeah, they're, they're relatively easy to replace. Uh, and most of the time your antenna is in a spot where you can come straight through, install the gateway right underneath it inside in place of where your crank was. So you don't have any extra holes or anything on, on the outside or on the inside. So pretty easy, pretty easy install. Our camper was a crank up that wing antenna and that's what we did with it. We just replaced it all the way through with, with this type of system. But uh, Verizon uh, is the only one that I know of that does offer unlimited for these. Um, it's a little pricey, but if you do a lot of if you do a lot of streaming, um, it may be you know where that they start out at about one hundred twenty nine dollars a month. Verizon does for unlimited, uh, which if I remember correctly, AT and T when I got my version of this, which is the, the previous version, AT and T really wanted to get into the RV space with the data, and so we're going to do an unlimited plan. It's 360 bucks a year for unlimited, so I bought it. Eight months later, AT&T decided, ooh, yeah, we can't do that. These RVers use a lot of data. <laughs> <laughs> and that was probably because of me. But they uh, they ended up going, with the last time they offered unlimited, I think it was about 200 bucks a month. Uh, so uh, Verizon, for people that are heavy, heavy users at 129, it's pricey but it's mobile and it's always there. But I think you'll find that for camping, there are very, very few situations where you actually need unlimited data in your camper. You're not in your camper all day, every day, with stuff connected and running all the time. So, you know, I, I think most people could probably get by with 10 or 20 gigs. Uh, the other thing that, one of the things that we do in our camper, uh, the largest TV that we have in ours is 32 inch and uh, on Netflix specifically, you can go into your account and set a maximum a maximum streaming uh, quality per device. So I actually went into our our uh, Netflix account and changed our camper TVs to 480p, which is standard definition. But uh, on a 32 inch TV, it's not that big of a deal. It looks okay, and it saves a lot of data. So I think we I think we use 10 or 20 gigs a month if we're in the camper a lot, watching a lot of TV. So most of the time, you know, they're, they're these lesser expensive plans will work. And my, my suggestion with that for people is to start out with the small plan. You can always upgrade it or add to it if you need it. Don't pay for what you don't need, you know. Uh, but they are handy. And the thing that ties into that well is a lot of the newer campers like these Montanas and uh, Cougars and there are a couple other brands have a system built into them that's called in command it's a big touch screen controls everything all your slides air conditioning heat lights tanks everything and the newer versions of that uh, have the global connect uh, feature if you have that system if there's a little gc logo at the bottom of it it's a global connect one if your camper system is connected to the internet you can control and monitor just about everything in your camper from anywhere in the world. And, you know, that's been something that we've seen a lot of the folks that have that system add even a small data plan to it um, just so they have that ability. <coughs> because a lot of us as, as campers are also pet owners. And, and one of the reasons why we camp is because we can travel with our pets because our pets are like our kids. Well, if it's 100 degrees outside, you leave your dog in your Montana, 
you know, if, if it's you know, 100 degrees outside and the air conditioning goes off and you're gone for a couple hours and you come back, it, it, could, it could end badly. If, you're, if you have a connected RV, a connected system, you can pull out your phone and monitor and make sure, okay, that's still 72 degrees in the camper. You know, or you've got your awning out, you know, you're out for a, a walk, a storm comes up, you can run your awning in from your phone from, you know, 100 miles away. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, and I'm one of those people, if, if something I own has a functionality for something, well, I gotta make sure it works, you know? <laughs> so, but uh, that's another reason why a lot of folks will do just a, a small data play and have the internet onto their cameras, just so they can monitor both systems when they're not in the camper. You know, turn the air on, turn the air off, close roof vents, run the awnings in or out, turn lights on outside if it's getting dark. So you know, kind of a kind of a neat thing, check and see if the, uh, uh, if the guy came by and emptied the tanks for you while you were gone, you know, that type of thing. Uh, you can add that to it? Uh, I don't think you can add it to it, but it's it's something that comes uh, from the factory on a lot of brands. Yes, sir? Now, is that proprietary on 12 volt, or does it work on the 120 volt? This system? Yes. Uh, the 120 volt stuff on that would be uh, your air conditioner, and the electric side of the water heater that would be hooked into that. So it, it does control. But you would be able to see that your air conditioner is not working. So does that stay alive if the power goes off? Yeah, it runs on 12 volts. Yeah, so it's running off your battery. Yeah. And your your gateway and your modem are also 12 volt too. So, you know, that's one of the things too. Your, uh, if you are out, uh, I don't know if you'd be roughing it with the internet, I would <laughs> say you're roughing it. You have no uh, no plug-in power, but you have a solar panel and a couple of batteries. Your internet will still work. Thank God, right? <laughs> Make sure you can get on Facebook. Uh, whatever you got, whatever it takes. Uh, and uh, where was I going with that? There was <laughs> probably something I should leave alone. Mark that off the list. Now the. Uh, uh, I was going somewhere with that. I completely lost my train of thought. <clears throat> I'll think of it in a half an hour when we're all gone. But uh, so yeah, the uh, the plans that you get for those are through AT and T, T Mobile, Verizon. WineGuard has plans that they sell as you go to if you don't have a preference on network. And those you get directly from them. That's not something we sell. So I'm not up here pushing something we sell with those plans because we don't. Uh, so you can use whoever you want for them. Uh, but you know, to me, with the way that the the RV industry is going, as far as connected RVs and you know smart technology, you know, streaming television, that type of thing, it seems like more people are leaning towards the internet side of things. You know, more so than. You know, maybe getting the best off the air TV signal that they can, or satellite, that type of thing. Um, you know, as a as a standalone, as a standalone thing. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So question: While you're on that device, so if you didn't want to get the plane, can you just also use that for a cell phone repeater? Uh, it, does, it doesn't work as a cell phone repeater. It only works as a Wi-Fi repeater. So it it won't it won't. Uh, Amplify the cell signal to your phone. Uh, that actually reminded me of where I was going with that. I'm glad you asked that question. These tend to work, even though they use the cell signal for the data to create your Wi Fi network, they tend to work better than just your cell phone or a hotspot as far as the signal strength that they get. With your cell phone, you've got a very, very small antenna in there somewhere that's doing the receiving and the transmitting of the signal. With these line guards, not only are they higher up for line of sight, but they have high gain antennas in them that will pull in that signal from, from further away or, or a stronger signal you know, that, that's a little bit weaker and it can also transmit a little bit better to get that data back to the tower. So I find that I have better luck 
with this that I do my cell phone a lot of places. You know, I, I pick on Harmony State Park a lot because the cell phone signal there is terrible. But it's my favorite state park, you know, so I, I, a lot of times I can't even get a signal on my cell phone, but I've got a weak signal that's just good enough where I can get data to, you know, do Wi-Fi calling on my phone or, you know, check messages or that type of thing. So even when your cell phone may not be able to get a strong enough signal, a lot of times you can still get a, a decent enough signal with that. And it does work as a really good off the air TV antenna too. It works better than my Batwing crank up antenna ever did. Yes, sir. Did you say that would work off of a campground Wi Fi too? It does work as a repeater as well. So yeah, you can you can use them to connect to a campground Wi Fi and rebroadcast that. And it stays your Wi Fi network too. So if you set up your Wi Fi network, you know, as uh, Rick's Wi Fi, it's going to be Rick's Wi Fi in your camper regardless of whether you're using your LTE service or you're connected to the campground Wi-Fi, it's always Rick's Wi-Fi in the camper. So you don't have to reprogram your TVs and connect them to something else or your cell phones. So does it do like the little hotspots do where when you hook it as a repeater, like mine, what it'll do, I, I always hook up, but it's smart enough to know which one has the stronger <laughs> signal. And um, if the Wi-Fi repeater signal is strong enough to support the demand, it will use that as opposed to the data. I do not know the answer to that question. Uh, the version of this that I have does not have that functionality. That may be something they've added for that. We'll have to check and see. Uh, most of you, you have to switch, tell it you want to use Wi-Fi or LTE, but we can check on that. Any other questions? A lot of them. Hey, Chad, you sort of touched on that. The, the challenge that we have, we're on Verizon, is um, just the signal strength. Mm -hmm. um, you know, last time we were camping, I think we were like, um, uh, uh, we're, uh, uh, for sales. So really hardly any signal. Um, a couple right across from us were from Michigan and she's on a laptop, he's on a tablet and whatnot. And um, they said, hey, you know, at and is the answer. I mean, have you heard anecdotally, you know, which, you know, LTE provider usually is better luck on campgrounds or it's still just a crapshoot? It's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bob, something to um, Are there cell phone repeaters still available for the camper? Cell phone repeaters? Yeah, no, that's a straight the signal. Uh, not for campers specifically that I know of, but there are companies that make cell phone repeaters that you can, you know, add to a camper or anything. There's not a, uh, there's not a camper uh, aftermarket provider that I know of. My parts guys. Anything that you know of, Matt, as far as a cell phone repeater? King makes one, uh, but to be honest, you're going to be able to find one anywhere out in the world that's going to be cheaper and as good as what you find specifically well, for an Yeah, the thing that I think would... Nothing makes anything specifically for an army. And the thing that I think would... would uh, maybe negate that a little bit would be if you're if you're able to have a, a decent internet connection that your phone can connect to most of your modern smartphones uh, have Wi-Fi calling so if you're connected to Wi-Fi it will use that to receive and, and make phone calls rather than the cell, cell service uh, I've, my, my phone's not new by any means it's it's I think three or four years old Android uh, but it does have Wi-Fi calling, and we have a place we go to uh, out in Spencer County where the, the cell service is pretty bad, but if we're connected to our Wi-Fi, you know, phone calls are easy to make. So I, I would think you wouldn't necessarily need a cell phone repeater unless you can't get a, you know, unless your signal's terrible for everybody. Um, have you been in Missouri lately in Arizona? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But if you're going to the Ozarks, you don't want to get phone calls anyway, right? Depends on if you try to do business or not. True. Or if you're calling me, right? Uh, you, know, <laughs> you don't answer anyway. You see my name. <laughs> <laughs> That's called selective. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh Don's calling Call yeah. screening. <laughs> do they support uh, dual uh, provider? options like a sim for AT&T and a sim for Verizon? This particular one, no, but there are uh, options out there for that. In fact, the uh, uh, JB, the owner of the dealership, uh, he works a lot 
from his army on the road. And he just put a system in his that's a dual SIM. He's got a, an AT&T SIM, and I think, I think it's AT&T and T-Mobile. Yeah. And it kind of looks to see who's the best, and we'll grab that one. Because it is a crapshoot. I go to yeah. California and back every year, and um, so I carry both. I have to carry a hotspot for AT&T and a hotspot for Verizon because I never know when I pull into a place if... Never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think there are... And I, I could be mistaken, it's been a while since I uh, messed with one of these. Uh, there are companies like this one, uh, Wi-Fi in Motion, and I believe they have a dual SIM device available. Uh, their plans are a little pricier, but it's more for that kind of situation where you need a absolutely rock solid, got to have an internet connection for working or, or whatever you're doing. Uh, but they do also, I believe they offer a dual SIM setup as well. Um, so that is an option as well. Uh, and I've seen people too take, you know, little devices like this. This is a little standalone, <coughs> excuse me. It's a little standalone device, but it does offer the ability to uh, put external antennas on it. It's got SMA connectors on it. So I've seen people with these have huge, gigantic antenna arrays on the camera. I mean, you can get as involved as you want to get with stuff, but, you know, in keeping with the, keep it super simple, plug and play, you know, we want to get in our camper and it just works so we don't have to mess with it type of thing. That's where I kind of lean towards these because it's easy. You turn it on and it works. But, you know, yeah, for, for folks that need the, uh, you know, the, it's critical they have an internet connection. Uh, there are dual SIM things available. They tend to be a little bit pricier though. Um, I think uh, service for the dual SIM ones, you can get into two or three hundred dollars a month, I think, just for the service because you're paying for two mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you do. two providers. But I think with his, I think he has his set up where it, it tries to default to one and he's got unlimited maybe on that. You're gonna fall and, uh, then the other one is a backup, maybe, you know, <laughs> 20 or 30 gig service or something like that on it. Dish doesn't provide any kind of an internet service on there. They do not. Uh, Starlink. I've seen some folks use the new Starlink uh, internet service with their campers, but as far as I know on that, that is still going to be a manual dish setup when you get to the campground you know, with the compass yeah. and adjusting your azimuth yeah. angles and all that stuff it's to all, get it. It's automatic. Oh, is it automatic now? All right, well, good. well, so there we go. So yeah, Starlink is automatic. Um, yeah, they're uh, probably about 100, 100 bucks a month, something like that. You have, do you have Starlink for yours? I don't have it. I'm a people that do. Okay. So yeah, that's another uh, another option with, uh, with the internet now is the satellite, which then it's not going to matter where you're at. As long as you have a clear view of the sky, you can have internet service. Any other questions from anybody? All right. Either I answered everybody's questions or everybody's asleep. Probably the second one. Well, if anybody has any other questions after we after we end, I'll be around. Uh, and we've got uh, Matt and uh, Pete from Service. Uh, Matt from Hearts, Pete from Service over there. If anybody has any questions specifically about install or, or pricing on any of the actual devices, those are going to be your, your guys to ask. But I do know that uh, Matt has a uh, door prize giveaway, don't you? No problem. Yeah, just uh, do we have the names? I've got it all up here for you. One of them's. I wish I could win the one. Probably the most expensive item we give away this year. Uh, we're going to give away the flashlights first, and then the uh, yeah. Is uh, is Jerry Brown here? Okay, I'll keep that one. What about uh, Mike Laney? Cool. Okay. One more. We 
can't let her win anything. Terry Schaefer. Oh, <laughs> All right, the last one's actually pretty cool. This is, well, they're all cool. This is a uh, Furion Trek. It's made by Liberty. It's kind of a portable power station, 500 watt. This retails for around $550. Wow. So this is a pretty nice yeah, gift to be given away. It's going for a good. Do I just have one? Yeah. Good. By somebody who does do some camping out in the middle of nowhere. Sue Shalotsky. Oh, she is here. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Well, thanks again for coming, everybody. Uh, make sure you grab a go up before you leave. If you don't eat them all, then I will, and that's bad. But again, if you have any questions or uh, comments about anything, feel free to see me or one of the one of the guys that are here. We'll be happy to help you guys out. But I thank everybody.